superlative, superlative, superlative. At the end, I mean, everyone's done all the, 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 the very, very funny bits. I mean, he got 21. He still couldn't drive in America. I mean, that is completely extraordinary. But at the end, he goes into this sort of peon to America. Yes. And he, it sent shivers through me because he understands, he knows what's gone wrong in America. He knows that his fan base, the people who voted for Trump, he gets that. And he talks about it and he says, but I still believe in this country. And I still believe in what this country has to offer. And he's talked about his parents and he's talked about creating the myth of America because he's do, he is doing that through art, through his own life, because his life is mythic, it's not real, it's not authentic. And the end of it is incredibly touching. He's a very, very generous artist. He's generous to his audience, and he's also generous to the people that he writes about. There is no meanness in him. And by the end, I was so moved by it. Um, I have to ask one question, which is, e even if you were a super fan, would you listen to this twice? Yes, I listened to it again this morning. Yes. That's why I was late. <laughs> Not that I was late, listeners. I was completely on time. But yeah, no, I tried. I just thought, oh, just, just go back and listen to a couple of songs. So it hooked right you in again. Because I, I sat there Not listening to it and I thought, well, I'd listen, I, I'd set my player to play the songs, but somehow try and, because once you've heard the routine, you've heard the routine. You'd be so no. happy if you were driving somewhere there and that was yeah. like, oh, there's nothing I like more than a live album with lots and lots of chats. You know, of course, others listen. are going to listen to this and think, it, and think oh, I could do that too. <laughs> the other question too, though, is whether, whether there are many people who could do this. I thought what was so impressive about it, he's very funny, but when he comes to Born in the USA, he's talking quite a lot there about Vietnam, his own, uh, his own avoidance of Vietnam. I mean, he implies that he went along to the draft board and basically faked it so that he, he pretended didn't he was gay that is exactly oh, right. what happened so, yeah. but but he ends before he plays the song he says i do sometimes wonder who went in my place yeah. because somebody yeah. did and i've never heard that before from people who opposed the vietnam war owning up to the fact that their refusal to go meant somebody else probably had to yeah i mean he's he's riffle about the vietnam war he talks about you know sort of the, um, musicians in a band in New Jersey and how they were all killed in Vietnam and he said you know these people are just completely lost something I would say about it musically is you do this is just him with a guitar and you do realize how tremendous the street band is um, which provides something you know something big musically and with with him just strumming on the guitar I don't think you get the sort of you know the best of Bruce, Bruce Springsteen it's piano. yeah that's true yeah yeah. He's a lovely yeah. yeah. He's a lovely well, I thought that when the the bit we heard, the ten, yeah. ten Street, um, yeah. you know, that when that comes in, even I, who am not a Bruce Springsteen fan, feel the hair go up on the back of my neck. Yeah, and that's before Dancing in the Dark happens. <laughs> <laughs> Dancing in the Dark is one of the best songs ever. I'm just sitting alone here trying to write this book. I need a love reaction. And <laughs> Baby, just give me just one. I totally screamed at my Bruce the Theatre. <laughs> Okay, well, Springsteen on Broadway is available now as a CD download and the Netflix special will be available from tomorrow. Incidentally, he narrates the audiobook. He does do his own version of Born to Run, so you can get that for Christmas. Okay. Springsteen wrote about the immigrant dream in his number, American Land, of a place where there are diamonds in the sidewalk and the gutters are lined with song. In Emiliano Monke's novel, Among the Lost, it's described as El Paraiso, paradise, and those determined to get there are prepared to take huge risks, submitting themselves to the mercy, mostly non-existent, of hired guides and people traffickers. And when things go wrong here, they go wrong fast. There comes an unexpected whistle, the clatter of a petrol engine revving up, and the darkness is suddenly ripped by four huge spotlights. Those who have come from afar stop, cower, and try to look at each other, but are blinded by the powerful spotlights. Then drawing nearer, mothers to children, children to men, those who have been walking now for many days begin to sing their fears. The words of these creatures whose bodies strive to merge into a single being cross the space. The man who whistled does so again and advances two paces. Confronted by his body, the thrumming of the jungle, like the shadows a moment earlier, 
falls away and for a few seconds all that can be heard are the whispering. 